Well, you, you know for a fact that I've not, and like a lot of Blues fans, I've not been convinced that we are capable of keeping clean sheets. But now we're playing in a more defensive mode. It's more possible. But I'm still not confident enough to, uh, to uh, predict that. So welcome back to Small Heath Alliance FC. And on Friday, Birmingham City play QPR at Loftus Road in an absolutely huge six-point game. And we're now at the business end of the season uh, with only eight games remaining. And Birmingham have, in particular, three huge away games coming up, QPR being one of them and also Huddersfield and Rotherham. So it can't be disputed, as I say, how huge these games are. And Birmingham City now have Gary Rower as the interim manager. And I'm sure as Blues fans, uh, we've been itching to get back from the international national break to see how he's going to set us up and to watch this game on Friday but I have no doubt in my mind this is going to be an extremely tough game but let's get into it and hand it straight over to dad so dad what are your initial thoughts for that game on Friday yeah so as you said a tough game it really is it reminds me a lot of when we were talking before the Millwall game that was a six pointer as well and we're talking about the importance of that game but now of course we've got less games to play and we're playing a team that's really very close to us so we really we have to win this game and it is, it is a tough game and I'm looking at the uh, form that QPR are in really they they really are one of the form sides for most of the season they've been in the bottom three or very very close to the bottom of the table and um, you know they've they've really really picked up form uh, if you look at their last 10 games they've won four drawn four and lost two um, and they play a quite an attacking style of football so we've really got to be on our guard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was doing a bit of research on QPR before the video, as we always do, mm -hmm. and I couldn't believe, actually, just to reference here, they've only lost two in their last 11 games. Mm -hmm. That's For a team that's that far down the bottom, they're actually having a really strong second half of the season, aren't they? Yeah. And in particular, they had a run of three wins. Listen to these. They beat Bristol away 1-0, Rotherham 2-1 at home, huge game, and they beat Leicester away 2-1 yeah. at, at the King Power Stadium. Yeah. You know, what, what would that have done for QPR's confidence to go to Leicester and get a win? It's an absolutely incredible result. So um, it's an absolutely massive game. And you mentioned Millwall there, and QPR kind of remind me of Millwall a little bit. They're very physical. Um, they, I think it's well known when you play QPR, you have to match them with their physicality. That already kind of worries me because we're a very small team. We've mentioned many, many times on this podcast about our players having that warrior mentality, getting stuck in, uh, uh, getting that graft. So we're going to have to turn up for this one. We're going to have to want it. And I'm hoping Rowett, because I've been hearing a lot of, on social media, um, at the time of recording, uh, the Blues are going to post Rowett's press conference to the QPR game this evening. So we haven't heard officially what Rowett has said, but I did see a few things on social media. Yeah. And he said stuff like, uh, the qualities here, it's all about how we prepared for the game, our mentality towards the game. So yeah. really interesting how he's talking about uh, mentality changes and shifting that perspective from the Blues players. Hopefully, to me, that means he's gearing them up for a fight and he's gearing them up for yeah. a, a tough competition. Yeah. But there's no doubt about it, Dad. It's going to be a tough game on Friday. It is. And we'll get on to Blues in a minute. But I just want to quickly just talk about QPR because, uh, as we've said, we've been impressed by their upturning form. But that's happened, I think, because their manager, Martin, I think he's a Cifuentes, his name is, he's came in and changed their playing style. He did start initially with a 4-3-3. But over the last dozen games, he's actually gone to a 4-2-3. One. So he's gone from more of a attacking pressing to a possession based football, which actually most of the teams in the championship now try to play. And that's made a difference to, uh, to QPR. They've got uh, uh, really strong players, particularly in the forward positions. We'll talk about some of their key players in a moment. Their home record, though, isn't particularly good. They've won four, drawn six and lost nine at home. So their home record isn't great. But as you mentioned, the Leicester game, you know, they're picking up uh, wins uh, Bristol City uh, away. Teams that are, you know, decent team. Well, Leicester definitely a decent team, but um, even Bristol City, you know, they're they're a, they're a decent yeah, yeah. side as well. So they're picking up points at the right time. Um, if you look at their possession in the last four games, it's been around about 50, 60% in most games, apart from that Leicester game, which was 26% possession they had. <laughs> But they won it 2-1. Yeah, and yeah. that shows that uh, you can win games in the championship by having very minimal amount of well, ball. Well, which, Blues have proven that. Which is exactly what I think maybe what we'll be reverting back to under Gary Rowett. We'll be allowing uh, the other opposition, starting with QPR, to have more of the yeah. ball um, and play a very similar style of play to what we used to do again, uh, for under John, John Eustace. Yeah, I, don't yeah. know what, I don't know what you think about that. No, absolutely. Because... The reason why, um, I guess, for my little bit of optimism boost and bump is is because Gary Roberts in the charge. And I think, as we've said again on this podcast quite a lot, he will get us set up in the way that 
a lot closer aligned to the way Eustace set us up. And I think Rabbit would go to a 4-4-2 if we didn't have such limited options going forward, uh, a strike force partner. Because yeah. who's, who's going to partner Stansfield? Tyler Roberts, who hasn't got a goal this season? It's mm. just not a really viable option for us at this point. So I think Rabbit's going to set us up in the 4-2-3-1. I think it's going to be very similar in that style to... Um, to Eustace, obviously, Dizal can't play because uh, he is on uh, partnered with the loan from QPR. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I think he's going to set us up very compact, and I think that I think we're going to be difficult to break down. We're going to have more men behind the ball. But what's interesting is you talk about possession. Uh, QPR averagely across the season is forty three percent possession, yeah. and we said this about Millwall. But Blues don't do well against teams who give us more possession. We almost look lost and don't know what to do with it, don't we? We saw it at the Den. Whenever we went forward, we kind of looked uncomfortable being in possession because. Yeah. We're a team that's used to playing out of yeah, possession. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's going to be an interesting uh, challenge uh, for QPR. But as always, I, lo- I like to pick out a few players and talk, and I'm sure you've done your research have, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then number 10, Elias Chair, yeah. um, five goals, six assists. He's had man of the match four times as well. So uh, yeah, clearly yeah. very strong. He, he, he's really one to watch. I've got picked yeah. him as well, yeah. Uh, Kenneth Powell, four goals, one assist. Yeah. And then Lyndon Dykes, four goals, one assist. Chris, Chris Willock, four goals, three assists. They were the four I picked out as, again, a pattern here that we've said for the for other teams in the in the league of spreading the goals around again. Yeah. Um. But they're gonna they're dangerous QPR. So I'm I'm cautious. I think as I say, I'm a bit more confident now. How it's gonna set us up. Well, to be fair, we're only speculating here. We have no idea how how it's gonna set us no. up. He could be a different man from where he was mm. a couple of years back. I, yeah. I, I very much doubt it. Um. But I think we're gonna be a lot more difficult to break down. And I think this game. You said this. Uh, sort of like just after the Christmas break a lot of our games are either going to be won by a mistake or possibly a set piece yeah. and I think we're going to see that on Friday I think this game is going to be made or break by maybe an individual error or or a set piece and I think um, we can come to score predictions a little bit later but as it's popped up organically I'm, I am going to go for a sneaky and a steal of a 1-0 Blues win and I think it's going to come from a you know, like the ping pong goals we've been seeing against Blackburn, against Sunderland, maybe, or yeah. a scrappy set piece, yeah, yeah. just throwing men in the box. Yeah, yeah. And I think we're going to steal it 1 0. I really do. I'm not, that's no disrespect to QPR. They're a good team. It's going to be a tough game. We're in for a tough Friday, but I think we can do it. Yeah, I mean, that's a massive result if we can get that as yeah. well. Uh, one other player as well that I've picked out as well, uh, centre forward Sinclair Armstrong. He scored three uh, and three assists as well. Yeah. So he, yeah, so basically, like you mentioned, they've got potentially dangerous players all around the pitch. But then, would you expect anything different in the uh, exactly. in the um, you know championship? It's the same. Yeah. Uh, as for Blues, um, now, it is interesting. I, I think that um, Gary Rout will, I'm, I'm obviously we're guessing, speculating here, but uh, I'm thinking that he'll probably set his team up very similar to how he did Millwall, um, that uh, we will have a very uh, sort of tight back line uh, and look to allow the other the team to have the ball and then to try and catch them uh, you know, in possession, and then and then score goals yeah. that way around. Just, just out of curiosity, I know we I know we haven't got a magic ball, but who do you think he's going to play across the back line, the back four? I I, I, th- I think that's going to be pretty settled, depending on on injuries. I've got, I've got a bit of a theory here, so I think I think we'll probably see Lee, Lee Buchanan at left back. Agreed. Uh, uh, obviously, Ruddy in goal. Uh, at right back, um, I'm probably thinking that he's he's probably going to go for drama. Uh, yeah. I, I'd pick drama uh, in the middle. Um, it's going to be uh, IU. And uh, probably Sanderson. Yeah. Uh, I thought exactly is, the same. Is, is what you think? I thought exactly. Um, yeah. I'm not too sure how Bielek is with his injury. Uh, oh, well, uh, well, I read today that he's in training. Okay. But here's my theory. Okay, because well, I, I read um, um, when Gary Rout first came, I read a, um, an article where he was talking to the reporters and saying that he was really impressed when Millwall came to Birmingham, how um, that Sunic and Bielek formed an excellent platform to go forward. So in my, in my mind, I'm wondering whether, and I don't know, obviously, I'm wondering whether Rowett is going to put Bielek back in midfield alongside Sunjic because... What, what game was he watching Sunjic and Bielek moving forward? No, no, they're no, they're no, our centre no, defensive. No, no, no. What, what he was saying was, he's saying that when we played under Eustace, he said he felt that they provide a good platform for the team, like right. a pivot so that they support the forward. Transition. Yes. And, I, and I'm wondering in my mind if that's what he's going to do because I do think Sunic will start. I, I think agree. He, 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 he will want a combative midfielder in there. Yeah, we all know, you know, as Blues fans, we all know that Sunic is not the greatest ball player, but you can't deny he will go in and put the effort in and make the tackles and he will break play up. And I think that's where Rout will see him as an asset. So I think in the middle, it depends on what he does with the... Because if it's not Bielek... Could be Pake, I think. It uh, could be Pake, and also he's a bit of a, um, a sort of a, a wild card. What about Jordan James in the middle? Yeah, I'm not I'm because not, he's no good on the left. In terms I'm not of against Jordan James in the middle, but the yeah. only thing is we do have an attacking mid uh, uh, position, which sometimes James goes in there as well, doesn't he? So it depends if he wants to set us up with Pake 
sorry, um, Bielek and Sunjic, Jordan James might jump back up into the attacking mid position or uh, he might start with Jordan James with Sunjic in the defensive mid. I, I agree. I think that could be set up, but we don't know whether Bielek will be back in time or not. Um, however, I think if he's going to start Sunjic, Paik is the nicer centre mid because he puts us a little bit more on the front foot, whereas yeah. Sunjic is a bit more defensive minded. And I've got... Uh, a little bit of a, uh, not a gripe with Sunjic, but I have said this on the podcast uh, quite quite a bit as well, and that's he leaves us vulnerable when he goes on these mad rampages. You know, so he he kind of loses his head a bit. He goes running, 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 and suddenly there are little pockets left behind us. So hopefully Rowett on the I, training pitch has instilled yeah. that sense of go for it, but do not leave us vulnerable. I, I think I think exactly. I think on the training pitch, uh, Gary Rowett will say to Sunjic, you sit in. Yeah. So basically you're the defensive midfielder. Then that will allow... Pike possibly to be the attacking midfielder, but he'll say to Sunjic, you know, um, be be defensive first before you think about going forward, because mm. he is going to tighten us up at the back. There's no doubt about that, and it's those types of wild card situations where you know our attacking midfields go forward and we're left vulnerable at the back. That's got us into this position in the first place. So yeah. I think it'll be. I think that's what'll happen. So the mid, the cent, the central midfield is going to be an issue. But just what about the wide players? Yeah, good, good question. I was going to come on to that as well. Yeah, yeah. I think. Well, let, just just to jump the gun really quickly, Stansfield will be up top yeah. uh, by himself. Let's just play the game and say Jordan James goes in that attacking midfielder. I think possibly Bakuna and Miyashi. Yeah, uh, that's, that's what I thought. Uh, well. Either side of him, yeah. if. Um, Jordan James drops down that leaves an empty space who do you think could fill that is Pritchard uh, in, uh, uh, I'm not but, sure I'm not sure about Pritchard um, whether he's still injured or not because yeah. if he if he's not injured he's obviously going to be in contention for yeah, the exactly. there's yeah. also we've got Dembele now I, th- I think that um, if Dembele is fit I think he'll play some part in this game yeah. I think well you had play. an interesting theory on one of our other podcasts and you said that uh, Rowett's setup might a compliment players like Dembele and Bakuna because when they do lose the ball, inevitably they lose the ball because they're flair players, yeah. we're less vulnerable because we have yeah. men behind the ball. So yeah. actually the damage that they do lose uh, in the defensive area isn't as bad yeah. when we're not yeah. in the high line, high yeah, press. Yeah, they're, they're less of a risk in yeah. these types of formations because they they may lose the ball, but you've got the security behind you. But also, you need these type of players. If you're going to allow the other team to have possession, you need those type of players to unlock the other team as well. So you yeah. need these players. Definitely. So I think that uh, we will. St- I think we'll definitely see Bakuna. I- I'm pretty sure he'll be nailed on to start. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's who we play on the left. It, um, maybe Miyoshi and- to start. Maybe Dembele coming on later if he's fit. Yeah, and if you look back to those again, I'm just going to go back. Cause I'm, I referenced this on a podcast a couple of days ago. Go back to the Huddersfield game and the West Brom game in that week that we lost used to lost used. That sounds really bad. With the week. He was sacked, lost him. <laughs> um, we, we had uh, Dembele, Bakuna, and Miyoshi feeding into Stansfield. Those yeah. were the attacking three going forward. So I, yeah. I don't know whether um, uh, uh, Rabbit might see value in that as well. And there's no, there's no denying it against Huddersfield. That Dembele was amazing. Really good performance. He's, I think he scored twice, um, and uh, he was just all over the place in a good way. So, who knows? I think it's going to be, in, regardless of the team, it's going to be an interesting setup because we're going to watch another manager at Blues, aren't we? We're going to watch another philosophy, another style of football. Um, but I think Blues fans, and I'm sure you're with me, we're going to have to get used to a similar style to what Eustace had us set up. I don't think Blues fans are mind as long as we get no, the points no. to stay up. That'll be fine. That was not a negative. Um, it's just uh, an expectation. Just one final point for me, and I'll give you my score prediction yeah. now. But uh, I think we might see Hogan back on the bench again. Because Yuki's now injured, uh, and that's actually officially injured. He's, he'll be out for a while, we've been told. That's, we're only a few weeks, weeks away from the end of the season, so it's yeah. quite possible we're not going to see him again this season. So that, that'll bring Hogan back into the uh, into the bench. Uh, maybe even the starting lineup. You've made the point in a few videos. It's every time we have a new manager, they always seem to start mm. with Hogan. Um, I think he'll be on the bench. Um, I hope so. Um, as um, you know, as a, as yeah. a, a sort of call-up if you need him. Yeah, I'd love to see um, Tyler Roberts get his first goal as well. I know we're hitting the end of the oh, season. Yeah, I'd love to see him break yeah. the net. And I don't think he'll start, but you know, I mentioned about a scrappy goal. Who knows? He might come on, come on off the bench and get us that winner. Who knows? But I would love for him to get that goal and get that confidence uh, yeah. for him to move forward. But just jumping back before I pass it over to you, I'm going to go for a really scrappy a uh, uh, steal of a 1-0 win for Blues well you you know for a fact that I've not and like a lot of Blues fans I've not been convinced that we are capable of keeping clean sheets but now we're playing in the more defensive mode it's more possible but I'm still not confident enough to to uh, predict that so I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw here uh, which, which I think could be a good result a be- better result for us than it would be for them because we're away Um if we can scrape the win, fantastic. But a 1-1 will give us a platform for the rest of our games then. So I'm going to go for a 1-1 and uh, we'll take a point away and then we'll go on to our next game. Nice, like it. Mm-hmm. So to be honest with you, as long as we don't lose, 
Yep. That's the key, isn't it? This is a, a must-not-lose game. Um, like, like the Millwall game was. Like the Millwall game was, but we're running yeah. out of games and we keep saying this and we keep dropping the ball, don't we? So, hope again, hope I'm right. Um, so do I. But, yeah. but we'll see, we'll yeah. see what happens. Yeah. So, you've just heard our thoughts, Blues fans. So, so what are your thoughts? We'd uh, love to hear from you. We'd love to get your opinions, get your thoughts. Are you confident uh, for the game against QP on Friday? Are you a little bit more pessimistic? What are your thoughts? Let us know. Um, and don't forget to follow us on our uh, social media channels. You'll see the X page and the Instagram uh, page on screen now. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss any future content. And me and Dad will see you on the next video.